The movie opens with Freddy, an endearing but socially awkward dentist, practicing a self-introduction he's crafted for a date. After spending five long years on a dating app, he finally has a match. As he waits in a restaurant, his nervousness is palpable. When his date walks in, he struggles to act normally, and it's so pronounced that she decides to cut the date short. Disappointed, Freddy returns home and shares the day's events with his ever-patient pet tortoise and confidant, Hardy. The following evening, while Freddy is engrossed in his favorite hobby, painting model airplanes, his phone rings. A mysterious woman on the other end mentions she's seen his dating profile and expresses interest in meeting him. Filled with hope, Freddy agrees and eagerly waits for her at the restaurant the next day. But she never shows up. Not long after, Freddy finds himself at a wedding, accompanying his aunt. With playful jest, she chides him about his single status and suggests he should settle down. She playfully teases him for his shyness and points out a young woman, suggesting he introduce himself. Taking a deep breath, Freddy approaches the woman, Kainaz. But just as he's trying to strike up a conversation, a drunken man, Rustam, interrupts them. Furious at seeing his wife with another man, Rustam shoves Freddy to the ground before storming off with Kainaz. The next morning, to Freddy's surprise, Kainaz walks into his dental clinic. She reveals a friend recommended his services and she needs a wisdom tooth extraction. After a brief examination, he schedules an x-ray and sets an appointment for the following day. As she's about to leave, Kainaz shares a personal detail. She once knew Freddy's late mother, a renowned cello player who had inspired her to learn the instrument. However, after marriage, she had to abandon her passion to fulfill her duties as a wife. The following day, Kainaz arrives for her procedure. Freddy, emphasizing her safety, recommends general anesthesia over local anesthesia because it would last longer and ensure her comfort. Once she's under, a fleeting moment of weakness overcomes him. He instructs his assisting nurse to make some tea, giving him a few minutes alone with Kainaz. He leans in, confessing his love for her. After she awakens from the procedure, Freddy inquires about any allergies she might have, prescribes necessary medication, and schedules a follow-up appointment for the next day. Once she's gone, he pulls up her medical records, obtaining her address, and decides to pay an unsolicited visit. Reaching her residence, he watches from a distance, concealed in his car. To his horror, he witnesses Rustam, who hasn't eaten all day and is enraged, assault Kainaz. Freddy's initial impulse is to intervene, but he quickly realizes he cannot explain his unsolicited presence and retreats. Haunted by his past, Freddy endures a restless night, plagued by a nightmare of a traumatic childhood memory. Witnessing his father take his mother's life and then his own, all while Freddy was just a child. When Kainaz doesn't show up for her appointment, he calls her emphasizing the importance of the post-operative checkup. After some hesitation, she agrees to meet. Upon seeing her, the bruises on Kainaz's face tell a story of torment. Over ice cream, in a quiet corner of a park, she opens up about the extent of Rustam's abuse, shedding light on the dark secrets of her marriage. The next day, Freddy goes shopping for new clothes, shoes, and even got a haircut, preparing for his date with Kainaz. They meet occasionally, and it didn't take long before they fell in love. Whenever she has free time, and especially when Rustam is away work, she'd find a way to see him. Once, during a movie, he kisses her, but she left abruptly afterwards. Concerned, he tries calling her without success, so he goes to her house. To his horror, he finds her badly bruised, the work of Rustam's repeated violence. After comforting her, he proposes marriage. She declined, reminding him she is already married, but confesses things might have been different if she were single. That night, Freddy reflects deeply on their situation. By morning, he has a plan and arranges to meet Kainaz. He reveals his intention to kill Rustam so they could be together. She is taken aback and declined his offer. Determined, he insists she needed to choose now for a better future and she finally agrees. They plan to part ways and not speak until everything was settled. Later, Freddy meticulously observes Rustam's nightly routine. He notes the predictability of his midnight runs and sees an opportunity. One fateful night, Freddy follows Rustam and commits the unthinkable act, running him down. Panicking and fearing arrest, he flees to his remote farmhouse. Over the next two weeks, as Freddy stays hidden, he enlists the help of a local mechanic to repair the damage to his car from the incident. Wanting to divert any possible suspicion from himself, he engages in charitable work for the local villagers, 
hoping his good deeds might provide some semblance of redemption. Back in the city, Rustam's untimely death attracts police attention. As they delve deeper into the investigation, piecing together the events leading up to that night, the net around Freddy begins to tighten. After two weeks, Freddy heads to Kainos hoping she would welcome him with an open arm but instead, a stranger opened her house and it is revealed that it is the secret boyfriend of Kainos. The stark revelation of Kainos' manipulation shattered Freddy's world. His misguided quest to save Kainos and build a life with her had, in the end, been nothing but a pawn in her scheme. The realization that he had been used not only for Rustam's murder but to help Kainos inherit and run Rustam's restaurant with her true love, Raymond, left him reeling. Alone in his house, he grieves for the love he believed was genuine. In an act of anguish, he set fire to the clothes he had bought for their planned dates. The following day, he goes to Kaina's restaurant and ordered a glass of milk. As he drinks it, he shot intense glares at the staff, unsettling them. Raymond, seeing this, approaches Freddy and spat in his milk. Freddy, undeterred, continues to drink. Freddy asks Kainos to apologize to him, but before Kainos could respond, Raymond, coming to her defense, struck Freddy, sending him crashing to the floor. Holding his ground, Raymond warns Freddy that they have those photos of him stalking Kainos and all the messages he sent her. And if he doesn't stop this nonsense, he won't hesitate to go to the police. Driven by vengeance, Freddy meticulously plots his retaliation. Late one afternoon, he observes Raymond and Kainos' departure from their home. He has already arranged for a locksmith to breach their front door. Once inside, Freddy laces their food with a potent sleeping agent. To exploit Kainos' allergies, he adds a dishwasher soap to her face wash, knowing from her medical history how she would react and takes the added step of removing any allergy medications she had. But Raymond and Kainos unexpectedly return and Freddy narrowly escaped detection, concealing himself on a bedroom windowsill while the couple shared an intimate moment in the adjacent room. Seizing a brief opportunity, he makes his exit. Later that night, confident his tampering with their food would incapacitate them, he returns. Quietly entering their bedroom, he accessed Kainos' phone, deleting any incriminating photos and messages. To fabricate an alibi, he sends himself a text from her phone, insinuating she'd borrowed his car that day. Freddy then turns his attention to Raymond, who lay unconscious, and takes out his anger on him with a series of punishing blows. To further his malevolent plans, Freddy stealthily drains the brake fluid from their car. The morning's rays had barely broken when Kainos awake to a disfiguring allergic reaction prompting a terrified scream. Frantic, she implores Raymond to rush her to the hospital. But as they speed towards help, their car's brakes fail, leading to a horrifying crash. Although they managed to survive the accident, their troubles had only just begun. The following day, Kainos receives a shocking call. A health inspector informed her that her restaurant was temporarily shut down due to a repugnant online review. A customer claimed they found a lizard in their dish, complete with photographic evidence. When Kainaz and Raymond arrive at the establishment to assess the damage, their personal lives were further violated. Freddy, still on his vengeful rampage, had hacked Raymond's Facebook account, uploading an intimate photograph of the couple for all to see. Amid the public outcry, Kainaz and Raymond argue, but a description of the guest who found the lizard from their manager led Kainaz to a realization. Freddy was orchestrating these cruel twists of fate. In a state of fury, the couple storm to Freddy's residence with intentions to confront him physically. But their rage is met with blue and red flashing lights. Freddy, always one step ahead, has alerted the police in anticipation of their arrival. Desperate, Kainaz and Raymond try to convince the officers of Freddy's guilt, implicating him in Rustam's death and detailing their recent tribulations. Yet, without concrete evidence, which Freddy had been meticulous in erasing, their accusations sounded like mere delusional rants. To make matters worse, Freddy's reputation in the town painted him in an unimpeachable light. One officer sternly warns Kainos and Raymond to steer clear of Freddy, even extending an offer of assistance to Freddy if the couple persisted in their accusations. Few days later, after enjoying a peaceful stroll with his aunt, Freddy returns home to chaos. The sight of a bullet by his door was chilling, but the destruction inside his apartment was even more so. Given the recent animosity, Freddy instantly suspects Kainos and Raymond. His phone call to them was both an accusation and a taunt. He'd anticipated their retaliation, he said, and in response has left a potentially venomous snake in their living space. Kainos' alarm was palpable over the phone, 
and Raymond's futile search for the snake only heightens their anxiety. For their own safety, they decided to retreat to a motel for the night. However, before they left, they had one more cruel message for Freddy. They gleefully inform him they had turned his beloved pet turtle into soup. A quick glance at his CCTV footage confirms their macabre claim, shattering Freddy's heart. Overcome with grief, he mourns his pet, arranging a heartfelt funeral the following day. Seeing an opportunity to shift the scales in his favor, Freddy enlists a homeless man, manipulating him into being a pawn in his scheme. He pays the man to mislead the police with a fabricated eyewitness account of Rustam's murder, implicating himself indirectly by giving the homeless man his license plate number. When the police arrived at his clinic, Freddy is ready. He cunningly portrays Raymond as the true culprit, alleging that he has used Freddy's car on the night of the murder. To further bolster his claims, he showcases fabricated messages he had sent to himself, painting a picture of Raymond's supposed guilt. The cherry on top is the undeniable CCTV footage of Kainaz and Raymond's break-in at his apartment. The police, now seeing the couple as the primary suspects, immediately reached out to Kainaz and Raymond, summoning them to the station for questioning. Freddy then calls the couple, promising that he could end this nightmare if they would simply meet him at his farmhouse and offer a heartfelt apology. Desperate to put an end to this, the couple agree. But Freddy's odd request for them to bring a suitcase only deepened the mystery. The night was pouring a storm as Kainaz and Raymond approach Freddy's farmhouse. Freddy greets them with an unsettling calm, his demeanor betraying nothing of the animosity they shared. As he poured wine, the gleam of a gun on the counter sends shockwaves of fear through the couple. Raymond, always on high alert, tried to communicate silently with Kainaz, urging her to seize the weapon. Kainaz manages to get close enough to Freddy to snatch the gun. A smug satisfaction spread across her face as she taunts Freddy, hinting at how his father's gun would tell a tale of his suicide. But when she pulled the trigger, an echoing click confirmed the gun was empty. Raymond lunges at Freddy, hoping to end their ordeal once and for all. The two men grapple, with Raymond managing to get his hands around Freddy's throat. But Freddy has another trick up his sleeve. Unbeknownst to Raymond, Freddy's flashlight conceals a hidden weapon, a taser. In a swift move, Freddy activates it, sending a surge of electricity through Raymond and, with another quick strike, incapacitates Kainaz as well. Bound and vulnerable, Kainaz and Raymond slowly regain consciousness only to find themselves in the midst of what looks like a gruesome nightmare. Gloating over his captives, Freddy reminisces about the times when anesthesia was not standard practice for dental surgeries. He took sadistic pleasure in emphasizing that they had picked a fight with the wrong professional. The police, alarmed by Kainaz and Raymond's no-show at the station, decide to look into their whereabouts. Their apartment's CCTV footage shows the couple leaving with a suitcase, a discovery that only deepened the officer's suspicions. When another camera captured their vehicle heading out of the city, it seemed clear that they were on the run. This revelation played perfectly into Freddy's scheme. By asking them to bring a suitcase, he'd manipulated the narrative once again, framing them as fugitives. Back in the farmhouse, Kainaz, sensing the urgency of the situation, attempt to play her final card. She tries to sow division by throwing Raymond under the bus, insisting he is the mastermind behind their actions. Even the cruel death of Freddy's beloved turtle. But Freddy wants to check if she was lying to him and retrieves his mother's cherished cello, he commands Kainaz to play it, hoping to catch her in another lie. Kainaz, trembling and unfamiliar with the instrument. Freddy ties her back and commences his most chilling act of vengeance, extracting each tooth from the hapless couple. Their agonized screams punctuated the air as they endured the excruciating pain without the mercy of anesthesia. Once done, he unceremoniously dumps them into a freshly dug pit, preparing to bury them alive. After he finishes, Freddy buries Kainaz and confesses that he still loves her and he lies down atop Kainaz's grave. The movie ends as the camera zooms out on Freddy while he smiles lying on the ground. 